Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. It's Lori here and Michelle and we're the twins from purelytwins.com and we're super grateful to have you here watching our video or if you're listening over on the Lori and Michelle show on the podcast, hello and welcome and we know you guys have a lot going on so we're super grateful for you taking the time out of your day to listen or watch our video here. That's right. And if you're new to us, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any video from Michelle and I or podcast. And if you don't mind, while you're already there, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, letting us know that you're here, you're watching this, and that you're excited to dive deep into key concepts that we're taking away from reading the book of Matthew. And that is what today's video is going to be all about. Yes, yeah, sisters, it is crazy. Lauren and I were in the looking ahead, planning out our videos that we wanted to film for you guys, and we looked at it, and we, I actually wrote it here, our testimony video we posted on our YouTube channel here on August 12th, which is the day we're filming this, although the day we get it out to you guys be August 13th. might be the next day. So. But I just, we just wanted, we just like, wow, we have to share. That's also <laughs> true, like the glory of God right there, by reading the book of Matthew and seeing how you saw that God is a God of detail. Everything was planned out and referenced and how Matthew just did a beautiful job of sharing God's story. And then here we are, as Michelle said, exactly a year later, sharing a revelation of what's been happening to us over this past year of reading the book of Matthew and how it's on the same day. So I feel like, again, that's all glory to you, God. Yes. Only you could write that type of story. So amazing. So we're, we have read all 28 chapters of Matthew. We're still in the process of filming our, our individual Bible studies to wrap it up, because sometimes when I break them up over a few days. So we're still in the process of that. But overall, our personal Bible study time, we have read it through this journey. Uh, there's a few things we're going to share with you guys about what we took away from, as Lloyd said, from the book of Matthew uh, for a little Real quick backstory though, if you're new and you're not sure like what's the big deal, uh, we'll make sure again we'll link up our testimony video down below, so please check that out. But we fell into false practices, uh, false things that being taught, some new agey things came into our life for Even many being years. Christians. But we, the things we believe, we'll make sure we link up yeah. our playlist below too, but we thought it was from God yeah. and then eventually Jesus pressed into our hearts last year really hard and some people spoke truth to Lori and I and it, it took us many, many months to, to come to the realization. But in the background, we were like processing it, getting getting resources, listening to other people share their testimony. So it took a few months, like almost the first half of the 2020 till we came and shared it in August. And so this is literally Lori and I's first time of actually reading every story, every line, every word of the Bible. We knew obviously general stories like many people do, but we really wanted to know the truth. We wanted to actually see what did God actually say, not and actually listen just to what people were saying, what God said. No, what did God actually say? What not God also say, but we also wanted to know, to know God. Yeah, well, we realized yes. we didn't really know no. God. And so it, it's been, it took Michelle and I a whole year to read the book of Matthew. And I know something like a whole year to read one book. Yes, and Michelle and I kind of knew that going into it. We are like slow and steady type of girls and uh, we really wanted to go deep with this. We didn't just want to read it. We wanted to like really study it and spend time in each chapter and really do our best to understand the bigger story, how do things correlate to things. Yeah, and it's not so. to show like, it's we're not doing it, we're not sharing that it took us a whole year and we took, like everyone has to do that. That's yeah. just where, remember this is our journey and our walk with the Lord. We're simply hopefully inspiring you, encouraging you to open up your own Bible and if you want to join along with us, that's great. So do also remember, like we're not saying that you have to spend a whole year studying yeah. Matthew or any book of the Bible. Remember this was Lori and I's journey. Mm -hmm. We decided to go slow. Some chapters, uh, like again, chapter 24, the All of It Discourse, a really hard chapter we spent three weeks on it yeah. and not saying that you have to do that but just I just want to pass it along like this just was our journey with reading the Bible what I, we felt called to and below we're linked to we have our reasons of why we're reading the Bible video and our Bible reading plan and I believe in one of those videos I can't remember which one it might be the Bible reading plan but we really talk about like we also allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and we also feel like that was part of it too like mm -hmm. we felt called to like the Holy Spirit was pressing in more on us to to take time and to really understand the end times and that was okay for us to do like we didn't have to rush through that and so that's one key thing that we've actually uh, really got to see in our own life during this last year of reading the book of Matthew just letting the Holy Spirit press different messages into Michelle and I's well, I think hearts. also I'm also grateful we took our time reading the book of Matthew because it also I believe the Holy Spirit led Lori and I to different teachers yeah. 
Because it was really important for Lori and I to, we noticed we were listening to a lot of our pastors at start were like, had one typical similar views on stuff. And we knew we wanted to get other people's perspective. We think that's very important. It allows you to, I feel, deepen your relationship with the Lord and truly get, it's like intimacy with Christ. Like that's what it's all about. You know, a lot of the parables are about that. It's, it's being intimate with Christ. It's knowing him, being in relationship with him. So I also say like, by us having these little detours, um, I, I was actually going to share some of the notes from some of the new people we came across because they really helped paint like the bigger like picture of what Matthew was doing. We just felt like it's very powerful to hopefully aid in your study of studying the book of Matthew. We hope this video serves you on, on understanding some of these key things. Yeah. We definitely are so grateful that we started with the book of Matthew and that we did take our time. So I hope we also encourage you to show that don't put pressure on yourself. Yeah to finish a book about a certain amount of time. Lori and I, I think are going to do another video of what we kind of learned about studying it and, and things like that. So we'll do a separate one on that. But I just want to, hopefully this inspires you to not put the pressure on yourself because this also shows that Lori and I did not read it every morning. We did our best to stick with it. But there are some weeks we went by we're traveling. We didn't read the Bible. So yeah. it's not about getting, don't remember, don't get so stuck on like reading, reading that you're forgetting just being with Jesus and experiencing And then it's life. a relationship you're building up yeah. with him. But it's obviously a very important habit that yes. all of us should be doing as Christians and followers of Christ. So we're going to share now a little bit more of the key things that really struck on Michelle and I's hearts reflecting back on our journey and just reading the studying the book of Matthew and mm -hmm. so um, one thing for me is we actually one of our the local churches here that we um, listen to online uh, they go verse by verse but one of the weekends uh, they had a guest pastor come in because the main pastor was traveling but anyway this this pastor and there's actually a sermon I had my kids sit down and listen to Michelle and I too and they still to this day kind of remember what he said it's really beautiful but it's a sermon that has stuck with me, the message that he was portraying, I never heard it from this way before, um, and it was beautiful. To pass it on to you, because it has, again, like I said, it's, it's stuck with me, and a lot of the stuff that Michelle's going to say too, it's just things that just have sat with us longer, and we've just been sitting with, so we want to pass them on to you to help you grow in your walk with the Lord as well. And the message that he was really getting across in his sermon was being kingdom-minded, and how beautiful Jesus portrayed that. He lived his life with such missional clarity, no matter the temptations that he's faced in life, especially in you know, Matthew chapter 4, we got to see some of those temptations with the devil and how Jesus overcame them. He was so focused on his mission there on earth and what he needed to do. And I feel like that is just so beautiful, A, to watch mm -hmm. Jesus. And then when you know that, when you read the book of Matthew, you get to see that. You get to see how he was always so focused on his bigger mission. Even when we talked about some of the healing, where he's like, "Okay, we've yeah, we've healed these people, but I gotta, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep mm -hmm. sharing the good news with other people." So his, he was always living with this beautiful realization and understanding and prioritizing his mission, and he was willing to protect it. And the reason, this, one of the stories he brought up was when he puts the disciples, after he just feeds the crowd, he puts the disciples, remember, into the boat and they go into a storm. So Jesus knew that they were going to go into the boat and go into a storm. So that too, because he said, you can see they're learning more about Jesus. He prioritized and protected his mission because the crowd, they were so amazed about the miracle that Jesus did, did that they want to start announcing him as king. And he's like, oh, that's not time yet. You know, that moment, he, he's got other things he needs to do first. So he was protecting his mission. So he got his disciples out of there. But then you look at his disciples, what can you learn from the disciples and from Jesus by putting them onto the boat? And then we talked heavily deeper into our individual Bible studies on that. It was so amazing for yeah. Michelle and I to learn this, but this I love this perspective as well. He said he knew the disciples, the disciples didn't realize they were going to be a storm, but it shows that even when you're obedient to something you've been called to by God, by seeing the story, you, have, you realize there are going to be hard times like the disciples fighting through that storm on that boat. They have to have the endurance to stay obedient to what Jesus called them to do. He told us to come out to this boat. We're going to get to the other side type of thing. And so I think pulling that out for what you can take away, what I'm taking away is that I wrote, there's going to be bumps in the road. Those bumps in the road help build us our endurance. But being obedient can still be challenging. I said, can make you question what is God doing? Just like the disciples, they're probably like in the middle of the water. Yeah. Hey, Jesus just put us in this boat. Now we're dealing with this huge storm in the middle of the night. We can't really see where we're going. What, you know, what's going on here? So I think that was a great 
picture in our own lives, each of us on our own walk with the Lord. We're going to go through different things in our life that might start making you question, am I really, is this really what he wants? I, yeah. It, you know, I just love that you can relate so much to that. But I also made note is that through those curveballs in life, which another one we learned, those detours in life are actually part of your story. So they're not really like, yeah, it's a detour, but it's, it's a detour that God wants you to go on to, to teach you something. And a lot of times it's building up courage and trust in Him. And that's why I think the ends with Jesus coming and helping the disciples, that Jesus is always right there with us. But He wants you to first experience something always for your good and His glory, right? So right. Just, and, and it can be hard though and in it, those moments, but I think that's why when you reflect back on a lot of these stories, it can help remind you of those truths and remind you of that. Yeah. The disciples, and I think that's why Jesus showed up, is that you get used to expecting Jesus to show up yeah. in your life. I think I know sometimes Michelle and I don't always do that well of expecting Jesus to show up in our life in certain ways. Um, that's something, again, we're working on the side with Jesus, like what, why <laughs> type of stuff. But I think that's also beautiful, that story of the disciples in the water and then Jesus coming to help them is reminding us that God wants us to know him. He wants us to, he wants to reveal himself to us through his word in different seasons in our own life. Yeah. And I just find that something that Michelle and I, we're still in a season of a lot of learning and growing <laughs> and being obedient during something that seems difficult. So we're doing this, we're, we're every day we, get, we, we, we see more of Jesus. And so it is really beautiful to see that. So yeah. I just, I love that. And I said, don't miss out God during your crises in your life because God grace is us. And so that God is there watching us, sees us and, um, you know, we just need, Michelle and I, one thing, that's we also, have to learn to expect God in our lives. Yeah. So we pass it on to you that we all need to stay obedient, even if it's hard, endure it to the end, knowing that it's building courage and our trust in our Lord and Savior. Yeah, and if you're going to reflect back on Matthew, there's a few times that Jesus reminds you of endure to the end, hard times, endure to the end. So it is a theme, um, but to remember how the book of Matthew ends, reminding us that Jesus was victorious. Yeah. And so that kind of brings me to some of like, my other bigger overviews that we learned about the book of Matthew from a new guy's commentary. I actually uh, listened to an interview of him on a podcast, and within that I got a lot of great wealth information. Lo and I did not actually have his commentary on Matthew. Definitely going to be the next one. We we're actually though. thinking about do we go and get it, or do we, when we read Matthew again, get his. So I'll probably, we'll probably end up doing that since we're at the end and we're, we're excited. We're like gathering our stuff for Mark. Anyway, so he just reminded us that even though uh, the, the, the Matthew was written, you know, for the Jews to see who Jesus was, and you know, that's why Matthew was, so much of Old Testament stuff was brought in. It was really in, in language. Jewish, Jewish language. It was yeah. really showing them that the, I wrote down that the Old Testament is showing this is, this is going to happen, that the Son of Man, you know, was gonna suffer. Like it, it showed, a lot of stuff was to show that and how he really focused on David, the help that he brought in the genealogy, he focused on that he's coming from the king of David and Joseph's story. So he really was showing a lot of that. But he also reminded us, though, that the stories of like the centurion soldier and the Canaanite woman, they also came to faith. So this book, even though it appeals to the Jews, it also appeals to the Gentiles and people that don't believe. And I think I loved how, even though it has a heavy Jewish perspective, but I loved how the guy just reminded us. So when anybody is reading the book of Matthew, they can be like, oh, wow, that person. And what you can kind of relate to some story in this book of Matthew and be like, oh, wow, that person came to faith. I can too. And I just think that shows the power of God's word, the power of the stories in this Bible. Um, and I think it's just important to note that um, it, it was to the Jews, but there's a lot of evidence in there that he was getting a lot of success with the Gentiles as well. So I just think that's a, a beautiful thing. Uh, he, you know, he highlighted a lot of the big Matthew's a lot of the big moments of Jesus' teachings, teachings. Mo most collective uh, detailed of all of his teachings. And I, I know one guy mentioned it's because that's how, um, I forget where I wrote this down, but that's how I guess the Jews saw who people who, who they were was by what they did. Oh, here it is. I guess, and Greeks believe you are known by what you say. Hebrews believe you are knowing by what you do. And he was relating that to because John the Baptist, you know, what was Jesus' response? This isn't hit Lord and I the first time when we read it. So I'm a preacher of this guy, bring that up as well. But Jesus' response wasn't like, yes, I am the Messiah. No, he he, go, he reminded them of the things he's done. Because as Jews, 
that's how they knew people by, by what you do. So I just thought that was really interesting. So he was reminding him because that's how John would relate. Oh, I, I'm, I did all these things. That's how you know who I am. Some general themes that we were called that we want to pass along from the book of Matthew was... So many stuff like this. Yeah. Just, I have, you know... I just really loved learning more about how Matthew was writing and how he was mm -hmm. so beautiful and in, incorporating so much of the Old Testament into his story to show that Jesus was who he yeah. was and everything that said in the Old Testament was him. So it makes me even more excited to really dig deep into the Old Testament. Yes. But I, sure. I really enjoyed um, watching how Matthew just articulated everything. Yeah, like I even wrote down, like, you look at the story of Israel and then you can look how Jesus fulfilled everything. And that's what Matthew is pretty much presenting. I have a little bit more to say on that, but I wanted to go back to some of the themes. Obviously we saw a lot of the enduring uh, things, but also Jesus also came here and you can see the different themes of the book of Matthew. Jesus has different levels of authority that he was showing. Yeah. One, he was, that he was the king of the Jews. He was also king of the universe. And, and you can always see he, Matthew always highlighted how people just were amazed when Jesus taught because he spoke with authority. So and he so always had that saying, I tell you the truth. Yeah. So you always saw that theme a lot throughout the book of Matthew to show what he says after that is really powerful. Yeah, and it just, so if you really go back and study the words Jesus used, like it really shows his authority and how he always responded back. So I think that's just another thing. Another thing, uh, the theme of Matthew, you can see like how it started, like it's all that, how the coming of Christ, him building his ministry as well, and then he dies. Uh, you got to see how he is, how, you know, he is our Lord. And you also see a theme in Matthew that Jesus is also the judge. So those are other big the themes to take away. Another thing I thought that was interesting that this guy brought up, the chapters one and two, that's really showing, Matthew is showing there that we have a new exodus and the exiles over, all relating to similar patterns. When you know the Old Testament, you can see that pattern as well. So Jesus, Matthew, the way he designed his wording, his voice saying it's so beautiful to really show that, that there's a new exodus, there's a new covenant with Jesus, it's through his blood, you know, the exile is over and it's all in Jesus. You know, then it goes into the wilderness. Jesus was in the wilderness, just like how the Israelites were in the Old Testament. And then out of Egypt, I called my son. So in the original text, I guess that was the nation of Israel. So your Matthew here is really showing that Jesus will embody the ultimate essence of all things. And Jesus is the new Israel. He picked 12 men rep re representing the 12 tribes of Israel and those 12 men forsake him just as the 12 tribes of Israel did in the Old Testament. So I just thought that was really interesting. And that Jesus just goes to show that God is the master storyteller. Yeah. You know, this Bible is God breathed. And so Matthew was running this with the Holy Spirit guiding him. And so you can see God is amazing storyteller, how he pieces everything together and he can paint this beautiful picture mm -hmm. of himself and of Jesus and um, yeah. I just, I don't know, I thought it beautiful. It was overwhelming at some times with Michelle and I to understand certain things. That's why we're so appreciative of other people who have studied this and we get to hear their take on it to help us understand something that yeah. Michelle and I were like, well, what exactly, what's that in here for? Yeah, and, so, and then another uh, story to show it's all Jesus now. Is I loved also how you remind us of the temple, you know, the destruction of the temple. A lot of people at Lloyd and I, like I said, I spent three weeks over those chapters. Uh, but he, I liked how he brought it up, though, just keeping it simplified, that Jesus is pretty much showing that he's the new temple now. So that's why he brought up the destruction of the temple. They no longer need it. Was to point people to Jesus now, not to some building. So I think that's also another way to look at it. Um, and also, when you just look at all the different sermons, you know, the laws and things like that in there, uh, I just liked how this guy brought up that, it's not a law gospel, but it's how we are to live. So how are we to love our neighbor? How are we to love God? And that, a lot of that's what Jesus was, was showing. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus paid for it all. We live in grace. But Jesus' words are supposed to stick to us. They're supposed to make us uncomfortable. They help us to evaluate ourselves. So I know he was bringing up a lot of people. I know some people, we've heard people say that too. If you're reading your Bible, you're not sometimes getting uncomfortable. Then you're not really sitting with what what is really being said. I think, again, Michelle and I definitely had moments where we were like con convicted from the Like Holy even Spirit. as believers, it's, it's yeah. all for our good, though. Remember that yeah. it's always for our good and how Jesus, how, you know, we're a whole process of sanctification as us growing to be more like him. Um, and then he was also bringing up the, there's miracle stories in there, but I'd like to tell you, reminded of us that is those stories are real, but there's also symbolic to us to, today. It's like how we're to come to Jesus, desperate, humble, and things like that. I like to tell you that and remind us that the ultimate miracle is that Jesus died and then rose again. Like that's, that's the cross is the ultimate healing. 
And I just think that's, I think I know the, uh, the cross can be what stumbles people, that throws them off, they don't get it. But I think the more you allow yourself to Jesus to speak to you and help you understand why he came um, and things like that, truly understand what the cross meant and that Jesus, it all was planned, it all was how it's going to go. And I know Lori, yeah. in one of our Bible studies, I think, I don't remember which one it was, that we talked about that more. We, yes. um, David Platt, I think, did a video yeah. more about that. I think it was when we started was, doing chapters uh, 26 and 27, I did that because that's um, actually something that I've been seeing a lot and so to me definitely a message that the Holy Spirit really wanted Michelle and I to understand really the significance of the cross and what it really mm -hmm. meant, and I actually made notes. Um, in Which my we'll make sure we link up. We did a, a when we celebrated Easter this past year. It hit or, us deeper at that round. Yeah, around that, around that, that time, time well. of course. So we'll make sure we link that. Yeah, up just one well. thing. I'll let Michelle finish up her thoughts. I just made note. We all talked a lot about, I know, in our personal Bible studies, is the wrath of God and really understanding God's holiness and what that really means and understanding the wrath of God. So I said, God has wrath against all sin. And the only thing that will appease the wrath of God is the blood of Christ. And the Father is willing to accept His Son's death in our place. God cannot turn a blind eye to sin, and sin deserves God's wrath. And Jesus took on that wrath for us. So I just think we should help us all to live our life differently. If you really sit and study, and don't just breeze over these chapters of Him being on the cross. I know they can be difficult to read. But if you really understand the, the, the suffering that Jesus went through and how God initiated all of it, God, it had to have happened, it really changes you. And mm -hmm. um, at least for Michelle and I, it has really deepened sure. our love for our, our Lord and Savior and what He did for us. And, um, and yeah. I think it's just something that all of us, especially Christians, we just need to really sit more. Don't go gloss over the crucifixion part. Really study especially Matthew really ask yourself when you're reading it why did Matthew put this in what why did why was this word used here and all of it has such beautiful reasons and mm -hmm. symbolic reasons I think a lot of well. it comes from the Old Testament I mean a lot of what was in this book of Matthew is a lot of it was how the Old Testament prophets talked or you know Jesus yeah. knew and so obviously Jewish a lot of language in there and so I think that's also important that's why you also need to know the context of it and why he was saying those things and the way he did it yeah uh, so I also just thought he brought up again about, you know, Jesus a lot about, the, especially around the parables, Jesus brought up a lot about how, you know, if you have the ears to hear type of thing, and it really goes to show, like, I liked how this guy mentioned, like, you know, the whole purpose of a parable is to conceal and reveal, yeah. meaning that to some, it'll be judgment, and to others, they will see it. And I just think that's another way, you know, to, to when you're looking at the parables is, is, is that... And he even mentioned that sometimes some of the parables he doesn't always get. So I think it's also a relief. Like Matthew so, would put that in. Like you know, the disciples didn't really get it because you can see that they were still questioning things. But yeah. Jesus was always willing to help them understand it better. Yeah. So again, God knows our true heart. heart. Like we're trying, we're making the effort. That's all that matters to him. It's not about nailing it every time or being perfect. Yeah. Um, I also like to tie tying, tying back into what Lori started this video at with about. This is for Jesus's kingdom. Obviously, the Lord's prayer. When we studied more about that, that just also just blew us away, had more deeper meaning than I think a lot of people realize. So if you yes. haven't studied the Lord's Prayer, please do. But even looking at the parables, I liked how he always reminded us, like it always, Jesus mentioned like, this is the kingdom of heaven is gonna be like. So he was reminding us that when you read the parables, it's not about you. <laughs> and I like telling you about it. It's how do they relate to Jesus and his kingdom? So I just like that. He says, if you're walking away from all the parables, oh, this is me, this is me. He's like, you're missing it. It's, uh, it's Jesus was always like, this is how the kingdom of heaven is like. So it's about him and his kingdom. Yeah, see how you fit into it, but like it's about him. And I just, I think that's an important reminder today. I think a lot of people like I think that's to, also a great reminder, just obviously reading the whole Bible, um, but especially too, like sometimes we, I feel like sometimes Michelle and I were trying to, uh, you know, learn to reading this, like putting yourself in the story, like, nope, this is, and then when you, when, by seeing the finish it, finishing mm -hmm. Matthew, we really got to see that more, how this was God's story and he is the master storyteller. And um, yeah, so we really just enjoyed the book of Matthew and really yeah, excited to start Mark and just yes. see what more revelations come through. Like us. even going back to like, you know, we're doing stuff for his kingdom, something Lloyd and I would be more, more aware of in our prayers is to making sure we're really focusing on being part of his kingdom. But I also like to, there's another uh, new pastor we came across, he brought up again reminding ourselves that faith is seeing things as God does, 
not the way we see it. And I think a lot of that you can see. That's, me, that's his will be done. You know, you. Because a lot of stuff was happening. Will. Like this uh, pastor, I, I wish I could go into it, but we'll, we'll, we'll be here for. Okay, so just a few more notes to say here, and then I'll, I'll do my best to go through it quickly. I know it's already been a long video. Uh, but this guy brought, he did a whole sermon on the parables. And his approach, and I, I can make sure I can link it down below. I think I can find it again. I just liked his approach to the parables of this because he was saying a lot of, like, and this was his take, and, and I think there is some, a lot of truth in it that he was saying, like, a lot of people like to just take out of those parables in chapter, I think, 13, mm -hmm. really focuses on that one parable and kind of don't include all the rest. And he was helping us remind it, going back, this is God's story. And all of them, Jesus said them all together. You know, that it was one big kind of message. So he was saying they all build upon another. And he did a great kind of graphic kind of showing that it's building, building it. And he actually even had a word. It's called like a martial parable. And I guess it was very common in that first generation for rabbis to do that. Um, and it's an earthly illustration, but means something from heaven. So he kind of said it's like the truth is built upon one upon another. And so I, I liked how he kind of reminded us of that. But... Pretty much what he was saying, if you kind of see why Matthew put it where with all the other stories surrounding the parables, it looks like Jesus' kingdom wasn't being successful. And that's you know? one thing, too, we did notice by the book of Matthew. Like, he'll say one story, but then something else after it. Sometimes, like, okay, what? He didn't always write it in a chronological right. order and stuff. So, so it was really nice that if you, that's also a beautiful thing when you're reading the book of Matthew. Sometimes just step, take a step back and be like, okay, how does this story fit in? Or why did Matthew put this fit right into the here? bigger story? Yeah. A lot of the, a lot of Matthew also was what the division between Jesus' authority and, and the religious history. Pharisees of that time. Yeah. And so I uh, just liked how he he kind of pretty much was sharing. Like I said, I have all these notes on it. I wish I could share with you guys all here, but just uh, if you have time, please check it out. It was it was interesting to me, and I just liked what he was. Just reminding of us that it's always showing the success of God's kingdom. And some of the things that I just feel like is important to, to, to share was that sometimes you can see like some of the, like the parable of the mustard seed and the leavened bread. Like he was saying, like that goes back to us saying, we sometimes can't see what God's doing, but we have to trust it's part. He knows we got to trust. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that Lloyd and I could took away also from the end time stuff and the end time stuff. It's like, he's the history maker. We can trust in him, no matter, like, I feel like we all get stuck up, like, do we underinterpret it right? And Lord, I realize, you realize, it's also only about us just to trust in God. We can't always see what is happening. A lot of people then couldn't see what Jesus was doing and how this was fitting into his kingdom, like, even his disciples. So I think that's just an important message to take away from all of this is, like, we always can't see what God is doing in someone's life, in your own life. We, we can trust in Him. We stay close to Him. We keep abiding it with Him and things like that. Not growing with what Him. That got the sermon I listened to about the He was kingdom focused and being mm -hmm. kingdom focused is, is that is that you're part of His kingdom and His mission for you for His anyway. It was just it was just really powerful for us as you continue to read the Bible. As Michelle and I continue to read the Bible, our understanding of God helps us grow in our trust in him and um and who he was yeah and so big takeaway from matthew a lot of people like i was saying with the parables and stuff people didn't understand what god was what jesus was doing but he was focused on the father's mission and what he came to do so a lot of people like uh, one guy mentioned that the book of matthew was also written like relating even to the like the chapter 24 and the woes and stuff like a lot of the Jewish people didn't understand like, their Messiah, and even other people can be like, your Messiah died. You know, like they didn't think like he didn't come and conquer and take over the Romans and stuff. So he felt like and not just died, but he died such a horrible, death. Yeah, like, shameful type of experience. Yeah. That, you know, none of us can possibly truly really imagine what that was really like. Yeah. But that's what and he like did willingly for us, did it, and like, willingly did it. And it says like, this is what I come to do, and, and I'm going to do it. And he was innocent too. And that's why I love to. Matthew really did a beautiful job of showing Jesus' innocence. Oh, innocence. yeah. Beautiful words, like the different things. And how it was always, again, pointing to Jesus when the Old Testament prophesizing all this stuff fulfilled. But just how he was mentioning, like, Matthew was also written to show people that it was, that, a, success. That it was success. Like, all that had to happen because it was said it was going to happen this way. This was God's plan. This was God's bigger picture. It's, it was written to show people all that happened, even the destruction of the temple stuff, was all on purpose and for a purpose for God's bigger story and plan. So yeah. there's also a lot of division happening within Matthew. You can see a lot of like choices and casting out into darkness. So it's also a reminder like there is no middle ground with Jesus. You're either with him or you're not. And I think Jesus, Matthew was also trying to outpaint that, like between yes. 
there was Jesus and then the religious leaders and like you know it's kind of you have to like choices and I also think aside. the side seeing that the you know the his journey to the cross and Jesus dying on the cross how all that was needed and how all of that was part of God's story and that he's the victor at all, I think that also just helps remind us in our walk and that when you don't understand something you just have to trust that remembering the stuff that he's already done for us and then it you know, ask him to keep revealing. I know something that's become a new prayer for Michelle, like, Lord, keep revealing to us a deeper understanding of what you're doing in our life here or how we yes. can be a better service for you. And That helps us, um, so. like, remember, we can come asking, knocking the Lord for wisdom and understanding. We may not get what we're asking for, and I had that somewhere with someone oh, like, oh, here. You, you can't always get a yes to your prayers because it will tell your story, not God's. It's about how God is working right. through you in your His life. Yeah, and, his and I think that, like, that's what we know about the Lord's Prayer. It's like, well, that's a program, and we want to help out it. That's what the Lord's Prayer is about. Like, you know, your kingdom come, your will be done. And we see Jesus as an example of that. He's, he was, as Lord said, he was kingdom focused. And Jesus is inviting, I think it's just beautiful, he's inviting us to be a part of that, to, yeah. to partner with him in that. The last big thing here I think I wanted to share that I thought was really important, just making sure... I get this. Oh, well, quickly, he also brought up about, I think it was related to we the... Are, we are heavy note takers, if you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my best to go fast, but share important stuff. Like, I mean, it's all important, but your life's about Jesus and living for him. And that's when you like surrender your life and pick up your cross and follow him. It's, it's, it's really that. It's, you know, doing, being part of his will, being part of his kingdom. We want to help participate in his kingdom. So I just wanted to pass it along. Another thing I did think is important is, like don't get so hung up that did you read every word you study did you study enough did you should you do another study on this before you what you know I just I mean in terms of like I don't want us all to get so stuck on like oh I only had three commentaries I should have had ten commentaries because I went through a period of that where it's like boy all the girls other Matthew commentaries were missing out what they're saying and then I was reminded of like one that Lloyd reminded me of like and I passed on to you it is a journey you you can't know everything anyways none of us can. So it's also, that's the part of the joy of the journey. Take what you can right now. Do what you can right now. Even if that means you read one verse a day, like do it. Like I just want to pass it along to you. But I liked how he was reminding us too though. Like if you look at the religious leaders, I think another important message of Matthew was what else was about the nun, you know, were they being blind guides to people but and blocking people from God. But they knew the Bible, but they weren't living it and i think that's a very important message i wanted to end on here well, actually that's just like one more message to end on it uh but i think something i want to pass along laura and i are doing our best to that's why i said like we're not obsessive about reading the bible every day and, like not forgetting to be with her kids if they call or something happens in her life a family member needs us like so i pass it along we do make sure you're living the bible and that's also why we have the holy spirit in us he guides us. So we yeah. trust in that and trust the Lord is with you. Just embrace those moments when you do get to really sit down yeah. and have time to study the Bible. So I hope that encourages you what guys in your walk. What a gift that is. What a, mm -hmm. what a special honor it is to do that. Yeah. So the last thing I do think is also very important to end on, and I promise this is this is it for me and I'll shut my mouth, um, is that we are not a number to God. And going back into like the counting of the, the hairs, I thought uh, that you know every hair in your head, I loved how the pastor was like, this isn't just about hair on your head. <laughs> It's that God knows you intimately and loves you even with your flaws. And I just love that. If you really sit with that, like he knows you, he knows your background. He knows what you're capable of. He knows what he's called you to do. Like, and not everyone will agree with you. And remember, that's okay. Prepare your heart to rely. I like this too. And Mary was a great example of that, mm -hmm. especially when she anointed Jesus with the oil. Like, uh, she shows that she just did stuff because she knew it was following Jesus and she didn't care that the disciples were like mad at her for doing that and didn't understand it and so to me that's that like you still do what you feel called that Jesus has put on your heart to take care of. But also she was getting it. She yeah. was getting it. The bigger thing bigger here. going on here and she's just going to trust the Lord, worship him, be with him. And I think that's the message for all of us. That's something I guess with the Michelle Lord. and I are, are doing our best to be better at in our mm -hmm. own lives is that there is something bigger going on here yeah. and that we're just, we're a part of it, but you know, we're just one part of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so God is saying with the hairs on your head and stuff and all that doubt that Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow and stuff. A lot of that was really reminding us that God is telling us, I know you and stop worrying I haven't lost track with you because I have like we think like God's like do you see what I'm going through God like do you see me well, I told you that with, like, with the disciples on the boat like they like start questioning God wait a minute you call me to do this but look at the mess it is I think it's that like I, I got you <laughs> type I see of you thing. I see yeah you. don't think I don't see you what's going on remembering like how the pastor brought up that joy is not happiness 
but the assurance God has not lost interest in you or doesn't have the power to deal with whatever you're going through. And I just think that's a powerful message I wanted to end on is that remembering that joy is our assurance and that God, he knows us, he, he, he knows us intimately and he's got us. We can't see where, what's going on, how it's all going to fit in this bigger picture, but that's trust. And I think yes. the more I sit with that, I think, because I know Lori and I are like planners, we don't know everything, <laughs> and like we, we get upset about like all the details, and I think that's a big thing that Jesus is helping me see. No, trust in me more. Trust in me more. Don't worry about trying to figure out all the different puzzles. And I would say like there's moments when I'm, I got it, and there's moments when I'm like frantic. Uh, so... It's a work in process. That's just the, the walk with the Lord. Yeah. But girls, those are the, the some of the bigger key things that's really been pressed on our heart from reading the whole book of Matthew. Please share if you've read the whole book of Matthew, what was spoken to your heart, or maybe let us know also down in the comments if something that hit you today from Michelle and I's message that you're going to go in prayer with. Um, let us know down below. Remember, this is a safe community, all of us together, understanding our Lord more and growing together as a community, as all followers of Christ. That's and right, and if you want to get more of our Lord and I scripture workouts. We have the scripture workouts, but we're actually like right now doing the Matthew with working out. We also have other fitness devotions, other fitness devotions inside, as well as our in-depth verse by verse Bible studies. Uh, all can be found inside our online studio, Move Live Faithfully. If someone once asked us like, how does it work? It is a private online membership where you get an, a, a login and you can log in anytime, yep. anywhere on your schedule. Like Lori and I posted videos. You can videos, pause the videos no and come back later yeah. to finish them. Yeah. No pressure, just yeah. all right there for you to enjoy. And it really helps support us to be able to keep creating them for you, keep creating content for you guys. So it's really that you're partnering with us. You're partnering with us to spread God's word through fitness. And we cannot do it without you guys. So, and for all the women who have joined us, we just want to say thank you. Yes. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so yeah. much for being part of our family here. And thank you again for those that watch our videos, subscribe to us, share our videos, like all of that, you know, is helping just these videos get seen by more people. Yes. So you are being part of the keep mission of God as well. So we just want to say thank you. And we're going to end out today's video with a prayer. So we want to invite you along with us. If you have the ability to close your <laughs> eyes, if you can't, you can keep them open. Um, but just bow, pray with us, please. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the Almighty One. You are the creator of heaven and earth, the worthy one. We serve a great God, a good God. We want to say thank you. Lord, help each and every one of us to stay kingdom-minded like you are, Lord. Teach us how to live with missional clarity. Press into all of our hearts today the mission that you have for each every one of us to do, Lord. Help us to have the strength and the endurance to stay obedient even in those detours in life, knowing that those are the moments in life where we get to grow in our trust in you, Lord. Help us all, Lord, to remember to expect to see you in our life. You are in all the details and that you see us. And Lord, help us all to respond to crises in our life with courage. Lord, we ask if you could bring hope again to people's lives that need it today, Lord. We are going through the unique times in the world today. Help us all to stay strong, firm, and supportive of one another during these hard times. And Lord, keep revealing yourself to each and every one of us, letting us know who you are, and that you see us, you got us, and that everything is happening exactly the way it needs to be happening, just like it did in the book of Matthew. Lord, we love you. Thank you for being with Michelle and I as we read the book of Matthew. Lord, we ask that again you be with the people that are watching today's video. Press into the hearts what they need to take away from today's video. Reveal yourself to them, Lord. And Lord, if there's anyone out there today that needs to be saved, we pray that they get saved today. Lord, may your will be done. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, this is your video. Use it as you may. We love you. We serve you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. That's it, girls. That is our video today. Our key takeaways from reading the whole book of Matthew <laughs> and reading the Bible for the very first time for a whole year. We're going we're gonna to do a follow-up video of us, Michelle and I, sharing like some of the things that we learned from reading the Bible in terms of more of like, I guess, technique. Well, like how, that we, how we marked that we up our Bible yeah, and so our that will be thoughts in a separate video. Bible study. So, again, subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss that video. If you're someone who is new to reading the Bible, we hope those tips and that video will help you. But we just want to say, girls, we love you so much. Jesus loves you. Remember, we serve a great God. 
and we'll see you in the next video.